Good morning, everyone. That's after eight o'clock. Welcome to morning prayer here at the Kirk at Free Liturgy this morning. In the Psalms, David prayed, 88 verse 13. But I, O Lord, cry to you, in the morning my prayer comes before you. Let's worship God and sing to his glory. Hymn 1, 1, 1, only verses 1 and 2. The first two verses of 1, 1, 1, holy, holy, holy. Seek the face of the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. O Lord, great High King of heaven and Father of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, the giver of the Holy Spirit, help us by your Spirit's ministry now to be aware of your presence here in this building and in our minds, and in our hearts. Remind us that there is none holy but you, for all our holiness is but a type and a shadow of the holiness that we find in you. We confess before you and our brothers and sisters how far we have fallen from our original state into the quagmire of darkness and sin, where our lives are littered with ill words, thoughts, and deeds. And who could stand in the light of your holiness in human nature? We would be incinerated. Remind us that we stand not in our own righteousness, but in the righteousness of Christ, clothed in his atoning work and ongoing high priestly ministry, that even this morning, as we gather here, the Lord Jesus is with you there, and he remembers each one of us by name. Bless us, O God, in these short minutes as we consider your living word to us, and hear this prayer, united in the words Christ commanded us to pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Matthew 6, verse 
11 is the text for this morning. The Lord Jesus said, when you pray, pray then like this, give us this day our daily bread. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For the next few minutes, let's consider uh, three things we might do so that we would all pray better. It's the one thing we could all say. We could pray better. There should be nobody this side of eternity that would try and say, my communion with God need not be improved. Only the Spirit and the Son can say that with regards to the Father. The rest of us are works in progress. So how does that petition, give us this day our daily bread, offer you three things to take away this morning to help you pray better? Well, let's think about the first thing. It will remind you that your praying needs to be balanced. How did that line begin in verse 11? With the word, an important word, give. How often we pray that? Give, Lord, give healing, give blessing, give more life, give freedom, give social political order to that country that we've just left, which is collapsing. Give, give, give. And how many people then turn around and say, my prayers don't get answered. That's why I don't pray. And when you explore the nature of the prayers that's offered from the person, the majority of times, it's a give prayer they're talking about. Here's a prayer that's received right now. Lord, we praise you for your holiness. There is none other like you. That prayer's been received. It's not been rejected. Here's another prayer, always answered, in accord with the intention it's offered. Father, I'm sorry for saying that. It was utterly wrong. It was irrational. It was a heat of the moment. It was sin. Forgive me. That sin has been confessed. The prayer has been offered and it's been answered. We know though, when people say their prayers aren't being answered, they only mean these prayers, the give, the give prayers. When did the give section begin in the Lord's Prayer? After our Father in heaven. You're in heaven, O Lord. After, hallowed be your name. After, your kingdom come. After, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see, the Lord shows you how to balance prayer. Let's not run around with prayer diaries that always begin and have a middle and an end with give me God. Remind yourself, there's much we want to offer in prayer as well as much we want to receive. So pray better by praying in a more balanced way. Prayer is better when prayer is balanced. Secondly, prayer is better when the Lord is trusted. Give us this day our daily bread. Well, that's not how we want to operate at the base level. No mortgage company would give you a mortgage if you said, I'll come back to you each day and I'll tell you if I can keep the payments going. They give you the mortgage on the strength. You tell them you've got resources for at least 25 years. But what happens when human beings get lots of resources, long-term resources, huge pension pots, oodles of health? What happens? Human beings start to trust in the resources they have, not in the God who gives resources. If God had given bread for the next week or the next 25 years for the mortgage, then you and me would start to bank on the resources, lean on the resources, work out how to divvy up the resources for the next number of days, for the next number of weeks, for the next number of years. And that's trusting the gift rather than trusting the giver of the gift. The Lord tells them you will pray for your daily bread because you won't be able to have a stockade of this. You're not going to have a 25-year bank account on grace. You'll come back daily 
and thus show that you trust the Father on a day-to-day basis. That's what prayer is. Each day we go to him, trusting you will give today because you're faithful. You gave yesterday and we praise you that you promise to give tomorrow. So prayer is better when it's balanced and prayer is better when God is trusted. And finally, prayer is better when the church is central. A lot of people's praying is independent of the church. They would have read verse 11 as, give me my daily bread. But Jesus says, you pray, give us this day our daily bread. The Lord will not bless you or me with a gift that we will keep and use only for you or me. He doesn't bless us with gifts that we keep in our pockets for ourselves. He blesses us with gifts that we would in turn use to bless other people. That's why some of us have lots of money, because he knows you would be a blessing to other people with lots of money. And that's why he doesn't give lots of money to all of us, because for some of us, in weakness, we would keep it in our back pocket only for ourselves. So when you're asking for God's blessing in your prayer, you ask yourself this as well. And would I bless another with this? If I was to receive this this morning, would someone be the beneficiary this afternoon? Or do I only really want it for me? Prayer is improved when the church is central. Prayer is improved when God is trusted. Prayer is improved when praying is balanced. Much can be learned from simply praying. Give us this day our daily bread. Let's pray. O Lord, you desire that we be generous with the bounty of gifts that you give to each one of us. We ask for healing and for strength and for help and for freedom and for the gospel to expand and for common good to abound. But in all these things, spare us from being selfish with these gifts. If we have them, let us use them. If we seek them, let us be prepared to use them so that many, many, many indeed could be blessed by simply partaking of the daily bread that you in grace would give even to us. And all this we pray in the Savior's name. Amen. Let's turn to 111 and we'll close with verses 3 and 4 and remain standing for the benediction. Verse 3.
Peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this morning and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.